Hello, welcome to Casual Veteran Gamer. In the video today, it's going to be a little bit different. I'm not going to be showing any game footage, but I'm going to be showing you this document called the SRD or System Reference Document. This is released by Wizards of the Coast, you can see written here. And it's a sort of a sample, a watered down version of Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition. Now this can be used as a reference towards some things inside Baldur's Gate 3. First thing to note, is that not everything is the same between the two games and lots of people on forums and different places are very vocal about that. The second thing to note is this document doesn't include all of the rules. It's missing a fair bit of information. So for example, it gives us here uh, information about races. It's got dwarf, dwarf traits, and it's just got one sub race. So for all the races, there's only one subrace doesn't have all of them so you can't find out information about everything but it does give you an insight as to what might be coming up so those of you not familiar with Dungeons and Dragons there can be lots of information for you to read the things that might be coming up for example Dragonborn what does that mean I'll let you read through this I'm not going to spend time going through all of it there's 403 pages it's way way too much for me to go through Quite interestingly, I think also, we're not just races, but we've got classes that will almost certainly be coming up, so Barbarian here. And this tells you what you get at each level, and so you can see what's coming up. And obviously this has got new race, uh, new classes, but also current classes. Let's go down to one that we've already got. This should be Cleric coming up next. So here we are, and this tells us everything about the Cleric. In my most recent video, I was talking about magic, and talking about the number of spell slots you get for each level. This is where it all comes from. So this here gives us how many cantrips clerics will know at what level, how many spell slots they'll get at what level, what level spells they'll get up to. Now we don't know for certain exactly what the maximum level will be in Baldur's Gate 3. A very long time ago they did say it was going to be level 10, but since then they've kind of hinted at it's actually going to be higher than 10. Quite a few people are speculating maybe f level 14 is the highest. We don't know for certain at the moment. But just like with the races, they only include a single subclass per class. So we can't look at this document to know what we're going to get for Circle of the Moon, what, what you get at different levels. But we do a, we can get information on what we're going to get at different levels for Circle of the Land, for example. Anyway, I'm going to try and skip through classes just to show you what other things will be here. Backgrounds, I think there's only one background here. There's only one feat in this document as well. You don't have access to all the feats. All the possible standard equipment and so on. They've got tools, other items you can buy. Here's the, they've only got one feet grappler. Usually said not to be a very good feat, to be honest. Here we are the ability score modifiers. When you're choosing your stats at the beginning of the game, this is where it all comes from. We've got everything about advantage and disadvantage here. This is where one of the main contentious issues of the game is about rests. Here, but only in the tabletop version, you're only supposed to be able to benefit from a long rest once every 24 hours. It's supposed to be a little bit rare, but we can do it whenever we want in the game. There's a combat section, and then this gives you spell lists. I think this is interesting. Because this has, I think it's actually got most of the spells in the player's handbook. I, I haven't double checked every single list of spells against the actual player's handbook that I've got, but this gives us a good idea of what we're going to get. So currently in Baldur's Gate 3, the ranger only gets access to first level spells, but we can see what to expect from second level spells. And most of these spells are in the game, but not all of them actually. For example, I haven't seen find traps or the locate spells. Otherwise I have seen the other spells. And you might also see that, I'm just going to ch try and check here. Ah, for example, in the game we don't have a detect magic spell. And there's no way of knowing if it's going to be put into the game because there are plenty of spells that don't appear in Baldur's Gate 3 that do appear in the tabletop version. But apart from just having the spell list, it does have descriptions of all the spells. So anti-magic field level 8, antipathy, sympathy, and okay, no, these are the spells that are in the player's handbook. Now this document was released, we see at the top in the bar up here, 2016. So there may have been some changes to the player's handbook. There have been some errata. 
but this can give you a very decent idea of what you, we're going to come across. And this takes up quite a large section of the document, but then the largest section by far, I've got some magic items here, this isn't the largest section by far, is this last part as we go down, are stat blocks for creatures. And I must say that the enemies we fight in Baldur's Gate 3 don't really follow these particularly well. Here's the actual entry for a goblin. So armor class in the tabletop version is 15, the hit points on average is 7. Although you can see this 2d6 kind of means if you want to roll random hit points, this is how many dice you would roll. But there are definitely goblins in the game that are have way more hit points than this. So you can't always, you won't be able to trust these stat blocks here necessarily. They do seem a fair bit changed. But they've got the same general attacks. And I have seen goblins use disengage. So they can use that as a bonus action on their turn. They can hide on their turn. But we all know we can hide as a bonus action anyway. One other thing to note about the spells especially is the range of lots of spells is higher than 60 feet. For example, Fine Traps, 120 feet. Fireball, 120 feet. But in Baldur's Gate 3, it's only 60 feet. So there are some significant changes between the tabletop vision, tabletop version and Baldur's Gate 3, the computer game. It's fairly close, and this can be used, I think it's quite a good name, as a reference document. So the rest of the document is all about monsters and their stat blocks. That's it, I'm going to put a link to this into the description. This won't be useful for all of you necessarily, because I know plenty of you have played Dungeons and Dragons before. That is going to be more useful for those of you who haven't played Dungeons and Dragons, especially Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition, because this is not exactly the same as the previous editions. All right, I hope you found that useful, and let me know if there's something else you want to see, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.